is my great pleasure to introduce our lunchtime keynote, uh, Minister John Malloy. Uh, Minister Malloy comes to his vocation of public service with great authenticity. The Malloy clan have been active community and civic leaders in the Kitchener-Waterloo area for years. He also comes highly skilled with a doctorate in modern history from Oxford University where he was a Commonwealth scholar. Um, as governments across Canada are making very critically important decisions, either by design or by default, on the future economy of Canada, Minister Malloy holds two critically important portfolios in Ontario, training colleges and universities, where we equip our future leaders and support workforces to continually adapt to changing needs, and research and innovation, where we support excellence in discovery and taking those important discoveries to increasingly competitive global markets. We know that Minister Malloy takes these two jobs very seriously and that he's very committed to make sure that everyone in this room can deliver economic value for the people of Ontario and Canada. Please join me in welcoming Minister Malloy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ilsa, for that very, very kind uh, introduction, those very warm thoughts. Thank you also, Ilsa, for your personal contribution to Ontario's innovation agenda, as well as uh, your leadership at Mars and all that Mars does to help Ontario move forward in the area of uh, research and innovation. Thank you very much. And I also, of course, want to thank uh, OCE for its leadership in research and innovation and Thank Tom and David and others that are here today from the OCE leadership for hosting another successful uh, discovery meeting. I had a chance to be here yesterday. Uh, I actually tour around Steve uh, uh, Wozniak on, uh, to see, meet many of the uh, uh, displays and to see uh, what's happening here at Discovery, a very, very exciting conference. And of course, uh, Discovery is just one of the uh, many, many roles that OCE plays in terms of uh, furthering Ontario's innovation agenda. So I want to I wanna thank everyone involved uh, with OCE for all their leadership. Leadership. I also want to congratulate all the uh, wonderful award winners that uh, we've just seen uh, behind us, uh, the many, many photos taken. Uh, what an incredible group of young people. I think all of us can sleep a little bit uh, more soundly tonight knowing that our future generation is in such, uh, such great hands. Um, this is the fifth Discovery Conference, but it's my first as uh, Minister of Research and Innovation. But uh, I don't want that to lead anyone to believe that uh, I'm new to uh, the research and innovation portfolio. In fact, I like to point out that I've been Minister of Research and Innovation so long, I can remember a time when you couldn't get an iPad in Ontario. <laughs> Wait a minute, you, you can't get one in Ontario now. Never mind. But, uh, when we talk about research and innovation or bringing your great ideas to market or about turning those ideas into jobs, what we're really talking about, of course, is building Ontario's future. Our government recently announced the Open Ontario Plan. It's a great plan to create opportunities for new jobs and economic growth. But for this plan to work, we need one key ingredient, all of you. We need academics and angels, entrepreneurs and venture capitalists working together to give Ontario the advantage it needs to compete and win on the world stage. And I'm so pleased to see so many people here from all those areas uh, here at the lunch and here at the Discovery Conference. And although there are literally hundreds and hundreds of you out there, and it's a very dangerous thing for a politician to ever single out one person particularly in a crowd of this size. I'm going to take that risk. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we should honor a very, very special guest who's here today, Dr. John Polanyi, our 1986 Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, who has been such a leader in research and such an example for everyone. So.
I was saying over lunch that I don't think we do enough to honor true heroes like Dr. Polanyi, who, as I say, serve as such an example to uh, generations coming after and has made such an outstanding contribution, not just in the area of pure science, but also many of his uh, discoveries and much of his work has gone on to influence and to lead to very, very important commercialization ventures here in the province of Ontario. So Dr. Polanyi, thank you for your leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where ideas happen in the blink of an eye where the speed of technology is increasing exponentially, but unfortunately the speed of getting ideas to market is not. We believe government has a role in changing that. One of the things we've heard most often from you is that government needs to respond quickly and effectively. You told us that you need better access to capital to help speed the growth of new technology companies and to help attract more investment from angels and venture capitalists. We responded by establishing the Investment Accelerator Fund, so companies like eSight in Canada will be able to bring their vision technology to the global market. With the help of government funding, eSight is developing innovative glasses that use imaging technology to improve the eyesight function for people who suffer from vision impairment. And ju perhaps just as important, they expect to hire 25 new employees over the next two years. You told us you needed help with market intelligence. So we funded the Business Mentorship and Entrepreneurship Program. Last year, this program helped more than 1,000 companies get the intelligence they needed. Ottawa-based Group 4 is one of them. Group 4 is developing low-cost light bulbs that use semiconductors. These bulbs use 90% less e electricity than regular light bulbs and last much longer. Now, I had a chance to visit Group 4, and it's a great operation, if you'll excuse the pun, with a bright future. They currently employ 25 people, and they expect to increase this number to 44 over the next two years. You told us you needed capital to help commercialize and demonstrate clean technologies. So we created the Innovation Demonstration Fund. And a company like Vive Nano has the help it needs to build a pilot plant to refine their environmentally friendly process for using nanotechnology in products and materials. Vive Nano, as many of you know, has just won Frost and Sullivan's 2010 North American Technology Innovation of the Year Award, and the company expects to create 19 new high-skilled jobs over the next two years. You told us about the challenges that emerging technology companies face in raising venture capital, especially in this tight credit market. So we launched the Ontario Emerging Technologies Fund to partner with the investment community and drive startup investments in innovative new enterprises. We want to create a vibrant venture capital community that will help Ontario companies grow and compete around the world. Companies like Toronto-based Ecobee. Homeowners can save energy and money by using Ecobee's technology to access their smart thermostats from home computers, smartphones, or any web browser. You told us that you needed better links between industry and Ontario's colleges. We're helping to make those links through the Colleges Ontario Network for Industry Innovation, or CONI, as we affectionately call it. This network is designed to leverage the technical capabilities of Ontario colleges and their important connections with local industry. Students and faculty at Toronto's Seneca College, for example, have helped a small Markham-based organization, Turtech Enterprises, improve an electronic support system for elderly people and persons with disabilities.